Frieza is one of the most diabolical villains in all of pop culture. He's a truly scary opponent with four forms each more powerful and destructive than the last. And he's my favorite DBZ villain, so I'm making a diorama for him. Which of course is going to be Planet Namek, the first place where we ever encounter Frieza and the setting for Dragon Ball Z's best story arc. First we need some XPS foam, which I cut with a box cutter and shape with a hot wire before turning to my low temperature hot glue gun, which I use to create the stacks that are going to be our Namekian mountains. And then I carefully plan where I want the mountains to be because I want to display all four forms on their own tier. At this point, the XPS looks nothing like Namekian rock formations, which is why I'm using my hot wire tool with a couple of different attachments to try and get a more Dragon Ball look for the rock formations. I really only use the hot wire tool for the beginning part of this before switching over to a utility knife to shape different areas of the rock formation and cut them down and round some of those edges off. Most Namekian rock formations are vertically inclined, not horizontally, so that's why you see me going top to bottom, not left to right. The last thing that I do in terms of carving is carve some smaller rock pieces that I'm going to attach to the exterior of what I've already carved. The key is to make sure that these don't look too rectangular because I want them to appear the way they do in either the Dragon Ball Z anime or the manga. Whenever I'm doing a project like this, I always go back and watch the source material. This scene shows First Form Frieza demolishing a Namekian, but it also has really good references to Namekian rock. It's also a good reminder of how evil Frieza is because he's just terrorizing these Namekians who have really no chance against him and a reminder of how powerful Frieza's first form is. I mean, these are supposed to be Namek's most mighty warriors and they get completely decimated by him. That had to hurt. Okay, back to the diorama. Now I'm gonna use my tin foil to texture the foam before slicing up the exterior part of the rock formations, which is a very similar process to what I showed earlier. After that's done, I do a little bit more texturing with the tin foil ball and also a rock from my backyard just to make sure I didn't miss any spots. And then I also take a little bit of sandpaper and do some light sanding to round off some of the harsh edges of the rock formation that I really don't want in the final product. I'm mostly happy with this so far, but there are some imperfections that I'm going to fix with a little bit of Plaster of Paris, which is gonna protect the foam. It's two parts Plaster of Paris, one part water, a little bit of Mod Podge, and some paint so that I can know where I'm spreading this on the dial. My goal is to get some complete application and fill in any of the gaps happening between layers of foam. We don't wanna see those because that's gonna take away from the illusion that these are rock formations. Once that was done, I did let this dry overnight, probably for about 12 hours, before moving on to the next step, which is filling in some of the gaps with some wall spackle. And just to be clear, this is lightweight wall spackle. I probably could have avoided using this, but I didn't do the best job of securing all the gaps with the plaster of Paris. So I just used my finger to apply the wall spackle to those areas and fill in those gaps. This step also helps me create the sloped areas that I'm gonna want to apply the Namekian blue grass to later on in the build. And just like with the Plaster of Paris, I have to let this dry, although this is a lot shorter. It's about 15 minutes before it cures and then you can sand and paint. I'm only gonna use a fine grit, 320 grit sandpaper on this because I'm really just doing some light sanding on this part. The goal here is just to really smooth out those areas that I just applied the wall spackle to because I don't want them to be rough. And when I sand, I always use a mask and some goggles to keep myself safe. It's finally time to start painting this, which I'm gonna do with this set of Earth Tones by Vallejo. But first, let's take a look at the DBZ anime for reference. After Frieza fights Vegeta, he turns into his most physically imposing form, his second form. And here we see some good example of what the Namekian rock should be color-wise. Oh, and if you're keeping count, Frieza still has two more forms to go. I am choosing to airbrush this, which you don't have to do, but I think it's going to really add to the overall aesthetic of the Dragon Ball Z look that I'm going for. And this is just a base coat that I'm using to kind of set the stage for the rest of the colors that we're going to use here. 
Other than getting complete coverage, the only thing I worry about here is getting a darker tone in some of the cavities of the rock formations, because that's really the way it appears in the anime and in the manga as well. For this paint job, I actually found it really helpful to outline the perimeter of each rock and then kind of fill in the color of the rock after doing that. Then I check my work to make sure that I got all the crevices throughout the entire diorama. Before working in my second color, a lighter tone that had more of a gold kind of a hue to it, I did spend a lot of time trying to make sure that I got some really good shading on the rocks, which is kind of funny because a lot of what I'm doing here ends up getting covered up by the Namekian grass, but hey, I wanted to do a complete job and I think that this turned out really cool. I momentarily traded in my airbrush for a hand brush and did some dry brushing of my lightest tone for the diorama to get some of that dirt or dust look that you would want on mountain terrain to come out a little bit. I made sure to do this all around the diorama in those crevice areas, the raised areas, just wanting to get a complete look on the paint job. It's finally time to sell this as Planet Namek by adding the signature blue grass to our terrain. But first let's check in with Frieza who's been fighting a powered up Piccolo that had fused with Nail before he started fighting second form and now he's turning into his third form which looks basically like a version of Frieza from the movie Alien and is definitely his creepiest transformation. I'm also pretty sure it's the one he spends the least amount of time in in the show but I could be wrong. Leave me a comment if you know how many episodes he appeared in. Okay, time for some Namekian grass. I'm gonna use Flock here after putting down some Mod Podge. Now I did try to dye the Flock blue, which as you can see did not work, but because I tried to dye it, it was wet, and I think having the wet Flock to put down really helped put this in place and kind of have it cling together almost like a glue would. And in my opinion, doing it this way led to the most sturdy Flock that I've ever had on a diorama. It was not flaky at all when dried, and so I think I attribute a lot of that to this step and then some more sealing that you'll see in a few frames. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I wanted each of these platforms to be a place that I could put each form of Frieza, and I collect SH figure arts action figures, so I have all four forms of Frieza from that line. And that's the reason that I left these areas so flat, I'm going to kind of try to attempt to account for that by adding some Namekian grass in sort of a sloped effect. Once I was satisfied, I used a dropper bottle to apply a Mod Podge water mixture to the top of the flock and this is really what's going to solidify everything so my flock does not flake off after it's been painted and sealed. I let this dry out in the sun and then once it was completely dried I started airbrushing on a shade of blue that is going to be my base for the grass. If you've never airbrushed before I would not recommend this be the first type of project that you try to do. I would warm up with something else and get comfortable with your airbrush before trying this. This step required a lot of patience and focus and I honestly don't think I would have been able to do it without messing up if I hadn't done several other projects with my airbrush before this. My overall approach for this is the same as what I described for the rocks. I tried to outline the areas where the grass meets the terrain first and then go back in and fill in those spaces after the fact which I had a lot of success with. In case you need a better example of what I mean, here's a shot where you can see I've already outlined everything and I'm just filling in the rest of the area. Once the base blue was dry, I wanted to go ahead and add a lighter blue on top of this to add some depth because grass is never just one shade, whether it's green or Namekian blue, and you see that when you look at the anime or the manga. Here's a look at the final paint job for the Namekian grass in all its glory. And that takes us to Frieza's final transformation where you see third form Frieza cracking into a million different pieces and turning into the Frieza that will ultimately destroy planet Namek. And as the dust is settling here, this really takes me back to being a 10 year old kid watching this for the first time and just realizing how much trouble everyone is in after this final transformation has occurred. What I didn't know at that time was the fight that was going to ensue that would impact my creativity 
for my entire life, the fight with Goku. But that's a video for another day. First, we have to do the final reveal for this diorama which is the perfect place to display all forms of Frieza from the SH Figuarts Dragon Ball Z line. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the creation process for this diorama and taking a look at the story arc for my favorite Dragon Ball Z villain, Frieza. If you liked what you saw today, I hope that you'll watch some more videos on my channel and consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Vasco Toys, action figure, dioramas, and props.